I'm Dak Carlson, and this is my, my B-52 here now. I didn't get inspiration from many builders in the world, but I also got inspiration from seeing many of these planes in real life because they are down in the, uh, what's it called, the air show, Miramar air show, yeah. Okay. So a couple, saw one there, and then there's these up near Castle. But this particular one here, um, it's very has all these, it's big, it's heavy. I should have made it hollow, but I didn't. <laughs> it looks very big and heavy. <laughs> it weighs too much, honestly. <laughs> yeah. So, I like that the tiles here just sort of help smooth it out. I mean, some things you want to keep studs open, some you don't. Tiling this would have been what it probably would have weighed a lot more than it already does at this point. And it also would have been expensive. So there are budget concerns coming eventually with that builds this size you have to <laughs> We're sort of scraping rock bottom when we did this a few years ago, so it was we are getting sort of desperate. I mean the cockpit I like some of the cockpits are built in here, I'm not gonna tear it apart, but you can probably see some people in there. Okay. Mine is I don't can't read it. Some sort of dragon with a bomb. But yeah. Mine the one that was at Palmer had a flag hanging from it, so I decided to put a flag on it. These planes actually operated starting from 1952 and are still going, oddly enough. This was a, this model's from the 90s, so I just feel like I want to do newer ones. If I would have done the older ones with the camouflage, except those are, I just can't afford that sand green. Yeah, and understandable. Some of those rarer pieces, yeah. It is a very cheap color to get in bulk. You can get a lot of it really cheap, especially the plates. You can get those from the Lego store. You can get them everywhere. So, so what's the, the structure of these wings like? It looks like you have a lot of stacked plates there. Is that kind of what keeps it all together? Yeah, there's a lot of Technic pieces in there. You have to get hinges. You have to get stacked the plates just right. You know, it's a lot that goes into it. None of the, the wheels don't touch the ground on the outside. So there's a lot of structural stuff that has to go around, go on in there. A lot of bricks at weird angles and plates and... A lot of the Technic pieces, it's like this entire thing's a Technic skeleton, but there's, there's a thin layer of plates on the outside. So that's just what kind of keeps the thing from falling apart. Now this one is more portable. It comes apart like right here and the tail comes off and the engines come off and this comes off and the, that comes off. You can probably take the track the landing gear. It's, just, it, it's sturdy. It's like one giant block <laughs> if, it, if we were to say it that way so yeah but you also kind of learn from other builds that breaking it being able to break it down is easier when you transport it yeah i mean we made that mistake with that one and i probably will make the mistake again in the future of not doing that it's hard because you 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 just want to build but you also need to think about a plane this big needs to be able to be transported so yeah it's really heavy i think if i had to redo this again i would make the wings a little more hollow and not use a ton of pieces but I, I like it. I think it's a cool thing. I don't think I'll ever tile it because that will be expensive. Really, really expensive. Yeah, understandable. <laughs> what is it you have back here, this kind of accessory then? Yeah, that's sort of, I, when I was doing it, I had these girder pieces for, I think it was a crane, a city crane back in the day. I just decided, well, there's, there's looking at pictures of B-52s back in the day, they have these maintenance things. Now, since we're on the edge of a table here, I can't put it back where it usually is, where the tail but I just have a guy taking picture of some of the sensors and lights in the back, the drag chute. So, yeah, I think that's a cool accessory to go with the plane. And do you know how wide the wingspan is on this? This thing is, is so huge. I don't know. It's hard to measure it because it has the swept wings, but yeah. maybe about five feet. Okay. That's, that's incredible. I think, I think this, is, this is just an amazing build here. So, yeah, that's, when, you, when you have these, all these builds you have here at home, do you just store them built like this, or how does that we have a bunch of IKEA tables, the okay. gray tops. So I love those. It goes with these two. We have them all sitting out and assembled. We somehow have enough rooms to have all of them. So that's the miracle in and of itself. But yeah, I, whenever I see something I don't like about it, I think of how I could fix it. Or if I really don't like it that much, I just rebuild it. And what drives you nuts is if you can notice something about one wing is different than the other, then you realize it's like a stud wider, and you're like, oh, no. <laughs> That's when, like, the OCD kicks in, and you're like, oh, it has to be exactly the same. It has to be the same, and then I like, tear up the entire wing, and, like, three hours later, yes, I, that stud's gone. <laughs> so. Yeah. The struggles of being a Lego builder there. <laughs> yeah. And I 
don't use glue in this because, I mean, there might be a little down here because these engines need to be able to withstand people touching it. But other than that, there's no glue holding up the landing gear or the wing structure. That was sort of important to me. 